Welcome to the My Haunt Life Podcast. Hello and welcome to the My Haunt Life Podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Russell. And Russell, this is a sad day. We, well, yes. We are, this podcast is going to be our wrap up of the tension experience indoctrination. Yes, it's sort of like today on a very special episode of My Haunt Life Podcast. <laughs> Really? That's your version of <laughs> sincere music? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we, we have been holding off a little bit on this episode because we wanted to get to the end of indoctrination, which is the first phase of the tension experience. Uh, and indoctrination is everything that you've heard on this podcast so far. This has started for us in February and recently ended just a few days ago. It's been sort of a... a a wild ride of live events, uh, one-on-one -on -one scenes, gaming aspects to it, ARG aspects, theater aspects. It, it, it's been it, it's been a fascinating mixture of stuff, that's for sure. And uh, it it um, it ha it has come to a very very disturbing end. It is sad, but at the same time, with every end comes a new beginning. And tonight. I'm actually going through Ascension, which is what indoctrination led up to. Ascension is at least a two hour event. Um, they've mentioned it can be two to three hours based on your choices. And we still aren't a hundred percent sure from what we've seen and what we've read, this points to being it a very immersive theater type piece, but who knows because they are playing their the way they've played their cards the last seven months. Uh, anything is possible at this point. Yeah, they, they've mixed in so many elements. The, there is no way to predict. And, and I, I'm I'm a little envious of you because uh, you're going this weekend, and I'm not going to go until next weekend. Uh, and you're but, not going to hear spoilers or anything. Oh, I know, me. and it's and I know so many people who are going this weekend. I'm not going to be able to talk to anyone for a week. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to disappear a little bit from my social circle of friends, uh, all who have gone through this. I think we should probably just mention, I mean, the last time we talked about Tension Mike was actually on the Scarlet podcast right. because of the Scarlet panel, which the Tension Experience hosted, uh, which basically devolved into a... Uh, uh, a hacked video feed uh, and chaos and yelling and screaming and um... that's what most of the live events happen. <laughs> or I had, had in them. <laughs> One of the reasons they're so awesome. <laughs> so, um, so after that event, though, things actually for the next few days, I figured that they would calm down, but they certainly didn't. Oh no, they totally ramped up. It actually, the Scarlet panel was on Saturday. On that Sunday, after Scarlet, we were all walking to, to eat, to grab a bite to eat. And while we're walking, Max, who's Reed V on the forums, got a call from Regent 7. And Regent 7 apologized him for the, the lack of contact and for Max to be available in the next 48 hours. Now, picture this scene. We were all walking. All of a sudden, you have a group of tension people and someone's phone rings. It's just panic and chaos and trying to get everybody to be quiet almost to a point where we tell cars to not drive just so he <laughs> can hear the phone call it was it was such a funny scene so max received this warning that he was going to have to be available in the next 48 hours so the next day uh we had been receiving periscopes from addison um as she was sort of apparently breaking away from the oa perhaps she was reading from the book of Anik. Uh, so, you know, Addison was in this sort of transitory phase, uh, and she was obviously reaching out and she was reading to us from the book of Anik. And the day after Max received that phone call, um, Addison, uh, 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 sent out this periscope and the reading that day, uh, the, she had been reading like parables, uh, you know, a story time with Addison, and it was uh, usually lesson oriented. And so the one that she that day was actually, to be totally honest, one of my favorite periscopes. And uh, this sounds so ridiculous because this one was so incredibly dark in material. Uh, this was the, the story of the hunter, Mike, who basically it was a story of a hunter who was 
really cocky and overconfident and uh, marched off into the woods on his hunt and ignored some warnings about how dangerous the bears were in the woods. And the story ends with the hunter dying at the claws of a bear, which he had actually mistaken for a pheasant because of the sound that the bear was making. Uh, and the description of that death, Mike, I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yeah. It was the, the clawing of the face and the eyeballs hanging out. And the, <laughs> it was just so incredibly graphic. And uh, it, it's, it's very funny that this is sort of like, this is a teaching moment, and you get into that description. Uh, and personally, Mike, I, the thing about the readings from the Book of Anak that were going on, I immediately saw them as like almost see-through. Like I immediately like transported any lesson and, and applied it to the community as a whole. Like I, to me, that's the whole purpose. And at, you know, I was, I had been made scribe. Yeah. That's why your girl made you scribe. Uh, because I'm the sensitive one and I interpret things this way. Wait, what does being sensitive have to do with tr interpreting a story up towards the community? Addison gets me. She gets me. Oh, man. So um, I you know, immediately, the first thing I thought of was that I thought that, that the whole thing was the, a parallel to Gatekeeper 2, you know, who, who we've known as Addison, uh, and that she was trying to warn all of us that, that, you know, we had voices among us who are not what they say they are. But who is the bear? Is it Sentinel? Is it the OOA? Is it her? Well, it's interesting because as the story develops, I think that could be interpreted in multiple ways because, you know, we, we, she, you know, later on, uh, as, as we're going to be discussing, she sort of uh, basically calls out the OOA as being a corrupt organization. So I think that the, the warning in that story is like literally trust no one. And we didn't even realize at the time how strong that warning was. See, she gets me oh. if that's what that means. All right, I'll give you that. <laughs> I will give you that. So I think Addison understands all of us very well. That's why she cares so much about the community. And that same day, uh, we just mentioned Max got a call the day before from Region 7. Max got a call that same day that Addison periscoped, and he was given an address, and he was to meet Region 7 at that address. The, it turned out that it was the downtown public library, and there was a periscope that showed up telling him where to or showing him where to go so it showed someone going down the escalators going into a certain room going into a certain section and then there was regent seven sitting there so max went there and he had his meeting and when he was done he came back to the forums and this is what he wrote on the forums today i met with regent seven at the library he told me he was at the end of his journey and that he lacked the will and strength to continue and that he wished that I would share a story, her story, and that five weeks from now I would give what he held to her and that he might and she might forgive him by then. He then proceeded to hand me a leather bound diary imploring its importance. I don't think we will see Regent Seven again, but I hope we can do something with this gift. You see, I didn't read the diary yet and don't plan to. Her story, Addison's story, is also all of ours. So a huge, huge, huge event. Max got Addison's diary. Like, holy crap. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, if you remember a few months ago, we had been told that this thing existed. Yeah, I think it was you and Morgan had to find it. Uh, yeah, and she actually brought uh, uh, Joe into that as well at one point because she she's basically letting us know that this journal was out there and saying we should find it at some point. So this was a complete surprise. The fact that it was handed over to someone in the community this way. Right. And that it was legit and like a full diary. Oh yeah. Like, and uh, at, at first Max didn't describe much about it. Uh, but I, you know, my first question was how long is this thing? Yeah. And it turned out to be a fair, a fairly lengthy document. Yeah. It's like 60 pages or so. Approximately. Yeah. A couple of days after that, I received a phone call. <laughs> And do you remember, I, well, you remember when you got a call and they played the podcast back to you? Yes. Well, the same thing finally happened to me. I can join the, you've had a recording played back to you club. Which also Buzz was in that, I believe. Yep. Buzz, yeah. Buzz and, well, not, uh, Andrew, it was Andrew's voice. Yes. Right. Okay. But it was a pod, yeah, it was a podcast that he'd been involved in. In the, the podcast that they played, 
I had mentioned that I didn't get certain info and you had joked about, oh, well, you probably pissed someone off in the office and didn't don't know who it is or something like that. I really had this vision of like some disgruntled employee deliberately withholding information from Mike, you know, like sitting at a desk saying, it's like, oh, yes, I'm sending out all these invitations. Oh, Mike Fontaine. I'm definitely not going to send him his yeah. <laughs> just to create tension. Well, here's the funny <laughs> thing. I get the phone call from an unknown number. I pick up, say hello, and then I hear you saying exactly that. And it was from the podcast we had just released that morning. Oh, yeah. Hours before. Just hours before. So I try to laugh it off. But at the same time, I went into paranoia mode because I was like, I'm like oh, my God, who, did I really piss someone off? Did I, is it because of what I said to three? Is it because of this? Do I really know someone? Like, is, are, are they just screwing with me? Like, all of that went through my mind at that point. I, I have I have a slight confession to make. You you told me about this, and I was at work, and I had one of those moments where I just sort of closed the office door and did the whole yeah <laughs> moment. <laughs> it's like they got him. I know they got him because I knew that you would overthink that. Oh, totally. <laughs> I was so happy about that. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> also, that same day, we should mention there was a Facebook post. And this goes back to what I was just talking about, the readings from the Book of Anik, I believe, that there was a Facebook post that simply said, her words prove the way to the one. And the one, both words are capitalized. So they have, they have started making reference to the one, which I think everyone in the community immediately assumed this was the gatekeeper one that we had been counting down to. I think that like everyone immediately knew that and recognized that. So uh, to me, again, this just seems to be a reference that the readings from the book of Anik, uh, which, you know, had begun leading up to Scare LA in that panel, which, you know, devolved into chaos, um, that these are lessons that we should be paying attention, that there's hidden messages in these readings. After that happened, uh, I believe it was the following day, right, Mike? Yeah. That Max uh, ended up releasing the diary completely. Uh, he'd originally tried experimenting with like releasing a few pages here and there. And I think the community was really eager to have it all out there. So, you know, he made the adjustment. I think he was probably encouraged by everyone to make the adjustment of like, look, we just want to read the diary. Yeah. So once Max uploaded everything, he took a picture of every page and uploaded it. We had Addison's diary and the diary started from the beginning uh, when she came to LA and she was having problems with her family and all she wanted she was lying to her parents about trying to find work and how she had a tough time paying for rent and she had to put a craigslist ad up and eventually another girl saw her ad and said don't worry about rent pay me when you can i believe in you and i got the sense that she was very she believed what other people would say to a point where it wasn't normal, if that makes sense. Like, I like a total stranger says that they believe in you, and you're just like, okay. Instead of going home, I'm gonna listen to what you say, and I'm just gonna stay here and keep trying. Oh, interesting. I, it's funny because I I think many people who read the diary kind of related to so many of us here in Los Angeles are are transplants. Oh yeah, it's like you and I both are. And I think it's really hard when you come here and you don't know anybody. It's such a big city. It's it's such a fast-paced city. I related to, to it on that level. So you know me, Mike. I'm gullible. So mm, Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that's I, the word I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> No, for for her. Yeah. Like, it's, so I, I didn't buy it as – I just bought it as like, like she needed a friend and she just grasped the first friendly smiling face that, you know, that, you know, like showed her some kindness. Yeah, I joked about this on the forums, but that plot or not – her story was basically the song lyrics to every 80s hair metal song. <laughs> Like I kept thinking of like that poison video where the girl gets off the bus and she's in on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, and... excellent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So or I actually what I thought was uh isn't that 
part of the plot for the movie Single White Female, too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I, just, I think she saw, you know, an opportunity of like, oh, this might be a place where I can land and feel okay and feel safe because she was lying to her parents. Right. And she, she didn't feel safe. And she, you know, in the diary, she tells the story of going in on an audition that went wrong where she was being pressured by a guy to do things she didn't want to do. And, you know, she encountered other actresses who, you know, were going through the same thing. Like all of that is covered in the diary, that struggling actress story, which if you are in Los Angeles, you probably have heard, if not actually known someone who's dealt with it. Yeah. And, and we're talking very uh, quickly about the diary, but if you're listening to this and you haven't read it, you should definitely try to read it. Um, it's, it's on the forums. Uh, just do a search for it. Uh, there's a thread and there's Google links for it. Uh, but it's definitely worth the read uh, because after that story, uh, it goes into how she met Benny slash Mark. Uh, it tells her how she how Benny brought her to the OOA in her first OOA meeting and about how the girl she was living with kicked her out and she went to live in the OOA offices and how she became attendant one. It, all of that is there. And it, it seeing seeing her go through these changes through her own writing is just it's incredible. Oh, it's it's absolutely fascinating, especially if you've been even just, you know, like. I don't know, just slightly following the story. This is such a heartfelt, like this, this diary was something concrete and tangible that we could latch onto and, and really interpret for ourselves as to what the background of this character was. And, and there's some really heartfelt uh, stuff in it. And, and, you know, you, you pointed to the situation with the roommate, uh, you know, you said the Craigslist might have, sounded you, you you made it sound like you thought the craigslist ad might be a little fishy in some way yeah i didn't buy that what i thought sounded fishy was how she moved out of the roommate's space because suddenly this roommate sort of disappeared almost. right and that opens up so many more questions and theories like uh, were benny and the, and the roommate working together to oh, get yeah. to recruit girls good you know, question things like that because suddenly uh in the diary the roommate who had opened her apartment to addison started like suddenly communicating through notes and asking her to leave. And of course, Mark was right there. Mark slash Benny was right there to provide, hey, wait, I know this organization that has a space that could provide for you. Uh, that was the moment in the diary that it, it got a little, oh, wait, this is manipulation now. Right. That was the moment for me that, that, that the diary turned, started to turn creepy. And her explaining the living situation and the different rooms she, she saw in there and you know, one thing, I mean, obviously this is total self-promotion, but how rad is it that in her diary, she mentions that she heard the My Haunt Life podcast? Oh, I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was really excited. Uh, yeah, she, she basically mentions that she went into an office area that she probably wasn't supposed to be into and, and they were playing our podcast and she didn't quite understand the significance of it, but it, like people were listening to it. And have you read book? I'm assuming you've read books about like Jonestown and stuff like that. Yes, I have. So here reading that it made me think of the radio rooms where they always mm -hmm. had people like listening and you know there were like listening for news and uh, things like that yeah i i didn't I, I to be telling us i did not make that connection until you mentioned it to me but as soon as you said that, it was like oh yeah that completely feels like what it was so it you know the the information gathering central yeah and then she eventually meets uh gatekeeper 4 and the helmet comes into play and she wears the helmet and she describes how her head hurts from wearing the helmet and her, after she meets four, her writing style changes, you know, her, her, the way she writes her words look different. It's, it looks like it's a different person. And I think in her mind, like she is different. She's changing. You can witness like literally witness like the change she's going through. Yeah. As Mike said, Go back and, and, you know, if you have any interest in the tension experience, go back and read this, this diary. Uh, it, it's a fascinating journey. And, and I say journey because it is Addison's journey. And, you, and she becomes more disjointed. The writing style changes. Like, you see the breaks happening. Yeah, and at that point, I started wondering, like, you know, maybe she has a split personality. Maybe there's this. Like, maybe someone else is writing. You know, there were so many different theories going on. 
about her and what was happening you know was did someone steal the diary and write in it at that point was the helmet manipulating her mind so people could, could mind control her you know things like that and when and that kind of makes sense because she starts saying how gatekeeper four was speaking through her and mm -hmm. kind of making her do things that right and it was like i mean you you have been like one of the closest people to her like when you started reading that you know knowing how emotional you are in real life like how did that affect you it it was it, it was a painful read for me and and i i want to point to something you just mentioned you did go on the forum and you and you did say and other people joined in on the conversation about the split personality thing and i immediately just went oh come on <laughs> I completely dismissed you. I completely dismissed everyone who was, you know, like, no, this is, this is her. This is her. This is her going through something. This is her adjusting to something. And even though there were breaks, there were, there were breaks in the writing and it became chaotic. I never bought into the split personality thing. And even the suggestion, and, and I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I don't think it was you. I think someone else suggested about that the helmet can actually trans form the person in some manner, uh, which I, I think goes in more of a sci-fi mode almost. Um, but, you know, conversations like that were happening and, and I just didn't know. Like, no, this is, you know, this is a woman dealing with a whole lot of stress, you know, the whole thing of her family and getting away from her family. And obviously they were starting to control her communication and it sounded like they were controlling her basic every waking moment. So I didn't buy into that split personality thing, but Mike, the way that all of this has developed since, and and especially the the recent events in the last couple of weeks, you know, I gotta say, I I might have I, I uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are you tearing up? No, okay. it's, not, it's not that. It's just I'm just flustered because I like it. I'm going to say something I rarely say to you, Mike. Oh. I may have been wrong. Oh. I'm used to that. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jerk. No, but I just, I just look at everything that has happened recently and, and, you know, the events right before the end of indoctrination and the final events. Like I, I look back now like, okay, well, all right. I, I dismissed that as a theory, but maybe there's something to it. You know, I, you know, and it, 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 just, it just makes me sad that, that, you know, it's like, if that's the case, you know, that this is a character that I got so emotionally invested in. I was completely blind to that, that aspect. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I, I dismissed it at the time. Like, as, as like, like, no, that is not what is going on. And then the way everything played out, I got to admit, like, there's, there is some validity to that thinking. And even if, you know, like, let's, let's not use the word split personality. You know, if you want to call that, that she was brainwashed into believing that she was someone else, whatever, uh, like, I just didn't buy into it. Right. And, and a lot of people were stressing that, that, like, obviously this is a woman not in control, you know, and then you also had people who were like, no, 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 this is all her choice. She's making, she's, you know, proactive. So, but yeah, I, I think I'm, I, I may have completely misread all of that at that point because I so much wanted her to be okay. Right. And then it got kind of weird because she started talking about my girl four <laughs> saying how four was going to kill everybody. And just like you just said, I didn't buy that at all. Like, Four was seemed to be all about the community. I don't think she meant the community. I think she meant probably the people in the OOA. That's just my opinion, but I really don't see four killing people. Yeah, uh, I, killing I, us. I mean, I I agree with you on that completely. I, I I didn't buy into that theory. Yeah, that like I because to me it didn't make sense from four's point of view. Yeah, like put yourself in her shoes, and and her hat. <laughs> and while this was happening, um, Addison wrote that she ran away with four, like four took her away. And that's yeah. when gatekeeper three came in. And so based on the theories that you didn't buy at the time, some of us thought, oh, maybe three is controlling Addison's mind. And that's why she's putting the, he's putting these thoughts into her head. And that's why eventually she killed four because three was controlling her. You know, there's that theory as well. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I, I find that hard hard to support. That's okay. <laughs> we can still be friends. 
So, um, yeah, this is the, the, God. There's so much food for thought in that diary. Yeah, there you can. There's so many different ways you can read it. There's so many different theories you can make from it. I mean, that is what I loved about it because someone like me, like I try to look at like every possible situation and there are so many possible situations that come from this diary. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one thing I, I want to point to, um, uh, basically the same day that, that uh, this diary became available to the community, uh, and like everyone started to devour all of this information and start to post theories about it and to, to question some of the, the truth and the validity of what was being said. Like she, uh, Addison did another Periscope and it was another parable. And I found this one really interesting. Uh, I, it was a little bit more, I don't know, obtuse than some of the other ones because uh, it was titled The Foreign Woman. And it was the story of a woman who, a, a poor hungry woman uh, who was basically given, uh, you know, she was starving and, and she had children, and but, but she was basically given, at the end of the story, she was given a seed. And uh, sort of the point of the story was, you know, you can solve your own problems if you have the correct knowledge and you nourish that knowledge and let it grow. Um, and, and to me, it, you know, I believed that, you know, that, the words for the readings from the book of Anak were supposed to be seeds in our community. Uh, that these lessons, you know, some of the, we are supposed to be taught something and that, you know, this was supposed to help us along our path. But in that periscope, um, that was the periscope where it ended in a frenzy because suddenly there was banging off screen, like somebody knocking on a door. We heard a male voice saying, uh, and, and basically in German, by the way, because this Periscope was apparently done out, outside of the country. It was right. another which, one. Which is what we all assumed yes. based on, on the time, the timing, uh, the time of day, and then the outlet, plug outlets in the wall. Right. So, you know, people were noticing all those details. I think you were the one who noticed the plugs, which yeah. is, I'm still, that still impresses me to this day, man. <laughs> I was like, really? You caught that? <laughs> so, but at the very end of it, you know, in German, uh, you know, there was this frantic, uh, you know, conversation real quickly and Gatekeeper 2 said like, wait, we're still live on camera. We're still, you know, we're still, you know, talking to the community. And um, the man off screen said, we have to go right now. And Gatekeeper 2 says, still on camera, they will destroy everything, only take the book. So she was protecting the book of Anik at that point. And, um, and by the way, thank you to Melissa, who has a coworker who spoke German, who helped get that translation, because everyone in the community was going, does anyone translate? Thank you to Melissa for helping get that translation made. Um, but here's the thing, Mike, also in that Periscope, uh, that was the one where she said, you know, she acknowledged the journal, where she actually said, it's like, look, I, I, I know that Regent 7 thought he was doing the right thing. Um, let me go back. I think I can actually quote is like, uh, there was a quote like, uh, remember the king that spoke the Anic truth because she told us the story of that the words were the most important thing. And she actually referenced four, which is what prompted me to start this, to bring this periscope up. And she said, the words four gave you were still the truth. It's why she did all that she did. You know, to me, even later, after all the, you know, everything that had gone down between her and four, she still believed that four had done good for the community. And that, and she realized that, you know, whatever she was doing, whatever her journey was, four was the one who, who led her down that path. Four was the one who mentored her, whatever mentoring meant in this case. Right. My girl drops truth bombs. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I, at that point, I still think Addison, you know, appreciated four even though she yeah. killed her. Which makes no sense. <laughs> um, it's but, a complicated relationship, apparently. <laughs> but here's an interesting thing that I just thought of right now. You know, and it's easy to, to think about things like this now because when we take our notes, we have everything by date, and so we can see everything. But how many times have people said, like, oh, this is just a smoke screen. They don't want you to look at what's really going on. Right. How coincidental and i'm doing air quotes right now for people that can't see me but how coincidental is it that the diary gets released we start theorizing and then all of a sudden addison periscopes to take our attention off of her diary think about that and let that sink in turn and literally actually directs our attention to 
another book with right. words that she says, this is the truth. Yeah. Classic magician's trick. <laughs> And then the day after that periscope, uh, Michael Gray gets an email. It was from the OSDM, and it was t it was sent to the clockmakers, and it basically says that Gatekeeper Two is being hunted, and that she is now a true believer, and we now have reason to think she may try to bring forth the one on her own. This will not be allowed to happen, and we will use every recourse to stop her. So she's being hunted by the OSDM. Which totally supports what had happened in the Periscope the day before, where literally people were banging on the door. She grabbed the Book of Anakin and fled. So definitely, this is now, she's being chased, she's being hunted. She's on the run, like going from place to place like that. And that was exciting. Oh, yeah, to absolutely. To have that happen, you yeah. know, like, it, it's like, holy crap, like there are now people after you and we get to witness it. Like, that's so cool. For me, not, maybe not you, but <laughs> it's just the glee on your face right now is a little disturbing. <laughs> so she might be hunted down like a small furry animal. <laughs> Yay. That was, uh, yeah, it, it was definitely, it was disturbing to watch because at that point we didn't, that was to me, this was one of the areas of the tension experience that worked really well. You know, it's the, the readings from the book of Anik, uh, on the surface, I know some people were like, this isn't that interesting. This isn't that interesting. But when you added to it all of this stuff of we're learning information about she may not be who she really seems to be. She may not be in her right mind. Now there's people hunting her down because they believe that she's bringing forth something called the one that obviously some people believe is what is supposed to happen. Other people believe that this needs to be prevented for some way, in some way. Or that we cannot be allowed to learn what the truth is about the one. So all of this was going on. So yeah, absolutely, this was exciting and, and disturbing all at the same time. And Gatekeeper too, at that point, like she made a really, like she, she hopped on the farm at one point and actually stated that she was on the run and that she wanted to assure the community that, you know, she, she, she had mentioned, uh, she considered the, distract, the, the diary a distraction. You know, she said that to me in a phone call one time, that, that, that there will always be, she basically indicated uh, later on that there were always distractions. Like they're always trying to, you know, keep our focus away from what was really going on. Well, she, you know, she had gone on the forum and said that she was on the run, but she was trying to assure the community that the words in her diary, uh, even though they were a distraction, they were the truth. So that, you know, it may represent, it, it re may represent a person she used to be that, the words were the truth and that that journey was real. And now obviously she was trying to get out from under someone's thumb. It seems to me. And also I just want to make a mention that Mike, um, she kind of directed part of that directly at you on the forum. Uh, what did you, you had said something earlier. You had questioned something. <laughs> I said a lot of things yeah. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was trying to lead that in, lead into that gently. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't remember what I said, honestly, because I said so much about the diary, about her, all of that. So, I mean, you probably know better than I do since well, you're bringing it up. Uh, well, I know you were, you were pointing to things like, you know, she's not in her right mind or she's not who she, we think she is and, and all that. And, but she basically, you know, this, this was the point was I have always said to you that I believe that Addison's her primary concern was always the health and, and the safety of the community. And the reason I pointed to this comment is uh, she actually said that the reason she didn't uh, basically reinstate you as scribe, uh, because look, you, you were better at it than I was. You oh, had, stop. You were, come on. It's like, it's like, seriously, like, like you, you know, your mind works in a better way for that position. I was the emotional one trying to interpret her words, and she flat out said to me, that's, that's what I need from you right now. But in that comment, she, she turned to you and she said, I just thought you needed to heal right. from everything that had gone down with four. And I, you know, I found that touching. That yeah. she, like, she really expressed that concern for you. Uh, well, yeah, but in my mind, I was like, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> and you killed my girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I... 
Wow, I was just I was just trying to like highlight the fact that she's really a good person deep down. So, just saying. Jeez. So, no. Now, uh, also, wow, like the, the things were going at such a fast pace during this period of time. Oh yeah. Like it's like every couple hours it seemed. It's, like, dude, the like the live visit that somebody got, I thought was so cool. That was amazing. M. Colliard, and I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, um, got a visit in person at her house. She lives in Atlanta, and someone came to her house and gave her a bag of sand. A bag of sand? Come on, man. <laughs> sorry, that's a 40-year-old version reference. Um, and with it, and he cut open part of it and let the sand, you know, triple out, trickle out. And in that bag. Uh, hidden within the sand was a note and the note said we do not need an hourglass to measure time her time is running out he he gave her the bag and turned and left like that's insane and creepy as hell yeah and amazing <laughs> <laughs> and just like it's it just it was such a it's like such a great symbol for like looking at Addison and the, the franticness and the, and the idea that she was on the run and being hunted. And then somebody literally in Atlanta gets a live visit with like that, that when I read that description of the bag of sand with the sand leaking out, like who thought of that? That is so weird and creepy. (laughs) And to me, this is something that clicked in my mind. If this person can find this forum member in the middle of, Atlanta. Yeah. Addison's toast. Yeah. Like they can find anyone. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. It, it agreed completely. It was like, oh, we have, we are everywhere. Yeah. And they proved it. We mentioned previously in Addison's journal that she had responded to a Craigslist ad. A few days later, a Craigslist ad appeared on Craigslist and it was eerily similar to what Addison had. And or to the description that Addison wrote in her diary. So a bunch of people bombarded this Craigslist ad trying to get more information. And wait, I have a question for you, Mike. How was that Craigslist ad found? I had mentioned something on the forums saying, oh, we should start searching Craigslist because of this Craigslist ad. Maybe there's more clues. Because some Craigslist ads stay up forever, it seems. Is that no, like... usually it's it's only seven days, but because the journal was so recent and because you know they kept saying, we shaped this, I did that partly to see if anything would happen. To see if it's like, oh, maybe oh, this can be an idea. Like maybe they'll give out like different clues or different information if, if someone responds to this or can meet up with the roommate. Because I thought... You know, oh, maybe they the roommate can become a character at this point, and she tries to recruit someone. Oh, that would that would have been fascinating. You know, really so that's been. that's why I did that, and then I believe it was Dim Style uh, on the forums who found it, and it was you know ten minutes after I made that post, so it it was very coincidental, and it, it sounded so similar, but apparently it wasn't part of it, and I don't. It, it, it's just it's just funny how how it all worked because I'm not sure if it was a legit person or if it was someone, you know, messing with us or game jacking, but I, I that's why I asked you to, to go into the beginning of that because I, I, I don't know if it was work or something. I came into that conversation late that day and I was like, wait, I couldn't, I wasn't exactly sure how it had been found. And my thought went to what if this is, you know, one of the people on the forum messing with the rest of the community. Right. And that's where I went at first. So that, that's why I asked you that question was to be more specific about how it was found. But you're right. It just If that was really just a regular Craigslist ad, it's like how, how weird and random is that the wording was very, very similar yeah. to what was in the diary. And I emailed the ad and I, I emailed it like in game, like as, as someone in that universe. And I asked the person, I was like, look, I'm a guy, because it said females only. And I was like, I'm a guy. I'm not trying to rent your place. I have a friend who responded to an ad similar to this, and now she's missing. I was wondering if I could talk to you to get more information. Did you ever get a response? No. <laughs> <laughs> Which would lead you to believe that that might have been a real ad that you just creeped the hell out of. <laughs> Tension. <laughs> Tension for people that aren't even involved. Right. A couple days later, 
the video that was shown or the hijacked video that was shown at Scare LA from BOS got released. And that was interesting because you had Sentinel in the dark, in the shadows, saying they don't need to be in shadows. <laughs> it's like, okay, man. Um, and he basically went on to say, like, you know, that like we're exposing everyone. You, you need to know the truth. And then he put a bunch of like pictures of people that were involved, like people like like Darren, uh, Clint Sears. Um, there were there were other people from the industry that people know. I think Darren's father or brother. Yeah, somebody was theorizes in there. that it might have been Darren's father. Yeah, and just a bunch of of Hollywood people um, that are supposedly behind this and. BOS wants to expose them and expose the truth. And... Yeah, and, and in the middle of that hack was also where, you know, they pointed out that, you know, the Ellis that we met at the the panel was actually an actor. Uh, they, they just basically said, this is all a scam. This is all a fraud. This is all a front. These are all fake people. Um, even if they, you know, exist and have real careers, you know, they're being used to hide something. Which I don't get. Like, if you want, like, what... If, if here's the thing, if Sentinel and BOS, their whole thing is to expose how evil the OOA is showing a bunch of like top Hollywood people that have done a bunch of amazing movies, isn't going to do that. You know, like if I was, if I was borderline on this and I didn't know, and I saw, I was like, Oh my God, like this guy's involved. Like this guy, this guy, this guy, Oh my God, I'm in. Like I would be more excited to go through with it at that point. So I, I almost feel like BOS was shooting themselves in the foot. Like, here's the truth. It's all these cool people that make cool movies. Don't trust them. Unless, let me, let me play devil's advocate for you here. Unless their point was, yes, absolutely. That will make it seem cool. That will make it seem, uh, dare I say, more mainstream rather than this weird cult vibe that some people accuse this event of having? Like, would that make it more acceptable to the masses and therefore lure more innocent people into whatever this trap is? So maybe it's, uh, you know, may maybe that's the point. I'm I'm, like, but I mean, that almost sounds like it's a recruitment video when you put it like that. Like, that's not a negative thing. It, well, uh, I see your point, but I think... Uh, Eventually, they by by doing what they did, I think they are setting it up where oh we can expose this as frauds, even though that video doesn't necessarily do it. I that that was how I took it. Right, but I they're, guess they're conning you into thinking this is cool when it's not. But it is cool. Here's the thing, like what you what, <laughs> I think it's cool. What you just said is like exposing that it's not a cult. Like that even better. Like, my parents don't have to worry. Like, oh, mom, don't worry. It's not a cult. It's just the, the guy that that's made the fraud. Saw. That's the fraud is that it's not a cult. Big deal. Hollywood is a fraud. Every movie you see is a fraud, unless it's a documentary. <laughs> I, trust me, even documentaries get, <laughs> <laughs> get manipulated I, a little bit. That's why I said it. <laughs> um, but, yeah. I, I see your point, but I, I think there are two sides to that coin. Yeah, so. there, there is, and I just don't understand one of them. No. Oh, uh, I just thought of something. Um, I think on the last podcast we had mentioned, at the, well, at the Scare LA, we talked about that video, and I told there's a picture of you in there, there's a picture of me in there, and I told you I didn't know where the picture came from. Yeah. I identified it. Oh, where? It was from a trip I took, like a like two-day trip I took to Chicago that a friend of mine from Europe was in town in Chicago and I just, and he called me and he said, look, I'm going to be in the U S can you get to Chicago? And I, I was able to do it for that weekend. So a buddy and I hanging out in Chicago, he took the photo of me and he posted it. Oh. So, and, and, and the reason is, and literally it was, he, um, I have this really, and this is why I couldn't remember it. I have this really confused look on my face in the photo. And what it was is we were try we were like trying to decide where where to go or what to do next in Chicago, and he literally just snapped the photo of me. So I had this like huh <laughs> expression on my face. And when I when I started finally after the BOS released this video, and I looked at it again, like why does that look familiar? And I finally figured it out, and it's from that trip to Chicago that somebody else posted the photo. Oh okay. I was like it's like, and again that was like 
okay, that's that's really creepy that they've they've kind of chased the the images of some of the patrons that far down the rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, look at what happened with Jake and his Instagram. Oh yeah, from years. Yeah, very very odd, very creepy. So a couple of days after that, uh, Tension was having a contest. And basically, if you shared their posts on Facebook or Instagram, you could win a preview of Ascension. And I'm so happy because one of the best people in the world won. And Susie was able to go through that preview scene. And she came back so excited. Like, she couldn't talk about what happened, obviously. But... <laughs> But man, she was so excited and, and basically told us like, we're going to love it. And like, I'm just so glad she was able to get that. But one of the things that she pointed to is, um, she said elements that we've been introduced to, such as the five senses will play a role in all of this. That really excited me. Cause if you've been following attention experience, there are all these theories about the gatekeepers may represent senses. Uh, we've had a lot dealing with sight and sound uh so so yeah even the puzzles hinged on one of the puzzles hinged on the five senses so i'm really curious to see how that plays out in the live event oh yeah definitely yeah that that was the most exciting thing that she said in all of the stuff that she really couldn't give any details on <laughs> yeah i'll find out tonight so oh, i'm so <laughs> jealous oh so then and this is a weird thing um and we're going to talk about it just because it just because um but people wanted better high res scans of addison's journal um, because when max took the pictures he he just took them with his phone i believe and then uploaded them um, he didn't have a scanner so out of game one of our friends um got the diary from him and said dude like i'll scan it no problem i have a scanner i'll get it done like cool so when that, that person, Michael Rizzo, that took the diary, or didn't take, but was lent the diary, um, he's BOS. And once they posted the scans, I believe they got a call to basically say, keep it in your possession. And it got bad on the forums because... This was something that was done out of game. Um, like Max gave it to Michael to to just like as a friend. And, and the same thing, there was no ill intent. And I'm not placing blame that that Michael Rizzo did this on purpose. Oh, yeah. I think we need to absolutely stress this. Yeah, we, yeah, we're yeah. not trying to like throw Michael under a bus here or anything. No, at not all. at all. Like it was it was something he was doing as a favor, or, like as a friend, like out For of For the game. community. Yeah, yeah. Just so we could see it all um, more clear. But... At that point, Tension made it in-game. And I don't think that was the best move they could have done. Because you take something that was done with real-life friends, doing real-life favors, and then you turn it into an in-game thing. Like, that caused so much havoc on personal friendships, on personal lives. And it was kind of a crappy move. And, and people, people read a lot of personal stuff into it, uh, which I, I think was a mistake. And, um, and, and yes, look, the, the overall, I think the purpose in it was that they were trying to service the community to get the diary out there. So that was a sincere move and, and that needed to happen. You know, people were having problems reading the diary or whatever. Um, but yeah, on the forums, it did get really, really nasty in places. Well, and here's the thing. Like, I understand defending what happened because the way, the way we took it was Sentinel or BOS or Tension called the BOS people and said, keep it, hold on to it. Don't give it back. And here's the thing, though. They always say that we create this and we shape and mold this. And once again, I'm saying this just because I don't know if there's any further details, but I kind of got to fault BOS for not sticking up for something that was out of game. You know, like, it's like, okay, that's going too far. Like, but instead it was just like, hey, do this, even though it might cause havoc on friendships. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's the way I took it. 
I loved all the BOS people. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm not like talking crap about them, but I just think it could have been handled better. And there might be stuff I don't know about. So this is, this is interesting. And look a along this road, you and I have had conversations privately about um, you know, I've never done an ARG before. I've never, so I really feel like I'm learning this universe to some degree. Right. And it's stuff like this, which is the most confusing to me. Um, there was an incident several months ago where I actually wanted to walk away from tension because it started to affect real friendships. Right. And, uh, you know, and then it, it kind of got confused with other real stuff that was going on. So, uh, yeah, the reason the reason I'm I'm saying this is in this situation, let me pose this theory that, you know, Max had tried to do something really generous and creative with the pages by releasing them slowly and 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 doing, you know, creative artwork and allowing other people to try to do something with them, and it was just taking too much time. And the community quickly realized that because everyone wanted to read the diary quickly. So do you think the reason this was turned into sort of an in-game maneuver is because of the slow response that Max had in getting the diary out to begin with? I'm not saying that it makes it right, but I think that might have been their thinking in the fact that, okay, we know that this is going to have to come into play later. We know that this is an important piece of information and an, an important... Uh, like th this is an object with significance. No, because no, because it was not an in-game thing. It wasn't orchestrated by tension or BOS to happen. Michael, all of this happened privately. Like, Hey, I have a scanner. I'll just scan it for you, dude. You right. know, like it wasn't like BOS said, okay, we need you to convince him to give you the diary. We need you to right. get it from him. It wasn't, it was a friendship. It would be like me saying, Hey, can I borrow the cat? Right. And then being like, and then tension realizing I have it and saying, okay, you need to keep it now. Like, right. you know, and it's like, no, that's, that's his, that's Russell's like, no, I'm sorry. You've gone too far. You know, like that's, that's how I look at it. I wouldn't just be like, well, okay. You told me to as part of the game. Interesting point. And, and actually I do agree with you. I, I, I just, you know, I, I could see it from both sides and to be totally honest, I, that was one of those moments when I turned my computer off and I walked away. Yeah. Because like the, the, the community started to really, you know, there was a lot of insulting and sniping and, and all of that. And some of it I think was intended to be playful and, and actually trying to lighten the mood a bit which I get, but also there, there was, there was some definitely real feelings hurt in that whole situation. Well, yeah. And especially, um, for Max, like this was like the first thing that he was able to do. Right. And he had such a huge piece of the puzzle and, you know, I, who knows what would have happened if this, if, if he didn't give the journal over, like, I don't know if he would have had to return it to Addison or what, but at that point in time, he could have thought like, wow, this is a really cool souvenir that I'm going to get to keep. And now it's gone. Right. You know? Well, well also, um, I think that there was a theory at the time where there might've been an understanding that, that, that region seven had, had actually given him incorrect information. Right. About like, cause I, I think Max said that he, he was, he, he told, he was told that in five weeks he would have to give the diary back. Which that's, that to me was the thing is that he had actually been instructed that he would give the diary back. Right. And then it was taken and the scenario you just laid out that suddenly an out of game thing became an in game thing. And the person who was instructed to do something was not able to. That, that was what rubbed me the wrong way in the whole situation. But I, I think part of it was the fact that um, Region 7 might have misspoke. Uh, in the fact that it was actually supposed to be like five days, like get the diary out in five days, not in five weeks. Right. But all of this happened weeks before this happened. Oh yeah. So it's like you, if you wanted something to happen like that, you had a couple of weeks to be like, Hey, someone get the diary from him. This yeah. is what we're going to do. Yeah. But whatever it's, it's in the past. It, it's happened. We're all friends still, I think, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, it, but, but it points to something very real, which I have pointed to before is that some people take this very, very seriously. And, you know, I, I, you know, Mike, you've played in the ARG world before. I never have. So things like this 
uh, make me question, like, wait a minute, why, you're like, why am I taking this so seriously? I'm having fun. This just takes the fun out of it. Right. So, yeah, it, it was, like I said, I walked away for a little while there and, and just, just like, I'm not going to come back until the ugliness is over. So, which is disappointing. And again, um, you know, I, this community means a lot mm -hmm. to many of the members of it. You know, it's been stated numerous times on the forums. Uh, it has literally brought people together from across the country and in other countries. Yeah. So, but you know, it, it, it hurts me when I see, and literally we had this situation where someone went on the forum and said, this is my opinion. Please don't attack me. Yeah. That was the moment for me where I was just like, this is, this is really not good that people are reaching the point where they feel they can't be honest because they're going to be attacked. And if they're going to be attacked, why should they be here? Right. And, and I get that. And, but in the same sense, like, you know, playing devil's advocate, is it really attacking if you're defending and discussing what you believe in? Like no one, like, it's one thing to say attack and be like, you're stupid, you're dumb. Like it's that it's another thing to be in game and being like, okay, this is what you said. This is why I disagree with it. And here's why. You know what I mean? And Th that's fine. But you also had some people who were literally on the forums going F you. Oh yeah. You know, to me that was, you know, when I saw somebody do that, that was like, okay, that's, that's, I'm possibly out. Yeah. Cause you it's know? not being separated enough like no, real life. And not that. at all. So, and, and again, I, I think part of that is emotions run high. Uh, you know, I am a firm believer that one thing you do not do is uh, you do not drunk dial anyone ever. And I think there was some of that. I think there was some drunk posting going on. <laughs> yeah, Addison. <laughs> Not Addison born. Addison, because when Addison called Russell from the club, she sounded like she was drunk. So um, Addison, uh, Addison slash gatekeeper too, once called me from a club with really good music. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. Um... <laughs> so speaking of Addison, a few days later, she periscoped. And from the the time of day it seemed that she was back in california and she was walking around constantly looking over her shoulder and well, remember she had said she was being she was on the run and we felt that she was being hunted oh yeah yeah that's you know that's a reason to be paranoid dude well, i know you that's... sounded surprised <laughs> no i was just explaining it for, okay for everyone <laughs> Jeez. continue on sorry to talk about your precious addison sorry i get a little defensive yeah. then here you talk about it then. no no oh, go ahead no no i don't you... want to hurt your feelings anymore no you <laughs> so addison looks paranoid <laughs> for some reason which i don't understand why at all <laughs> Um, but anyways, even though she, she kept doing that and looking paranoid, she stated that she wanted us all to meet and it would be free and soon. So, whoa, an event like yes. this close to Ascension that's free. Like really like, and everybody can be involved. Like, how is this going to happen? Yeah. This, I think that was a shocker is like, this is days away from the live Los Angeles event called Ascension opening up. So the fact that they were now talking about possibly an event and, and it was very funny that everyone on the forum, or I would say the majority of people on the forum immediately went to, it's going to be another Periscope. It has to be. Right. That's Just the because only of logistics. way. Yeah. For everybody to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and in the end, Periscope did become involved, but there was so much more. Um, now uh, it became a little quiet for a few days there, right? Yeah. So, and then, uh, the next, the next thing that happened was, uh, an LA Times article appeared and it was about the live event. So, and they, they featured, um, uh, the Darren Lynn Bowsman or Bozeman Bozeman or Boozman. <laughs> we still don't know. <laughs> we keep hearing people pronounce it in various ways. Um, and he basically gave a little tour, uh, of the, of the very beginning of the event and sold it as a, you know, and as an immersive event that was coming to Los Angeles. And this is important because this is the first, very, very first article ever published about Ascension with a look behind the scenes. I think this was the first time the general public learned that Darren was behind it. True. That's why this was such a, 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 a major article. Yeah, this was the man behind the curtain moment. Absolutely. So upon release of that, Addison periscoped and 
talked about this article. Yeah, basically saying that the article is a sham. It's a smoke screen. Don't believe it. You know, t the typical kind of stuff. It was a really short periscope. And Mike, in addition to that periscope, she called me and she basically took the tack that this LA article, LA times article as in the paragraph, she, she basically said like, this is all part of the game. And it was a really short, short phone call with me. And it was really intense. Uh, and she called me and I hadn't spoken to her in a while. She hadn't called me. She hadn't updated. And all of my interactions with Addison have been very brief. Like basically my phone rings, I pick up and she basically says, Russell. And she just states something really quickly that that's basically, you know, I, I don't have conversations with Addison. Um, so the first thing she did is she said, you know, and, and this, this was in that morning. She said, did you read my diary when I answered the phone? And I, I told her, I, of course I had. Um, and she responded by telling me, this is all a diversion. So me overthinking everything. <laughs> no. <laughs> the first thing I said is, wait, your diary? Your diary is a diversion? <laughs> and she was like, all of it. It's, it's all just a fucking diversion. Don't buy into this. You need to tell everyone. Do not buy into this. And I, I, I just said, okay, I, I will help spread that word. I, I said something like that, and she responded again, it's just a diversion. And then, Mike, she said, check the diary, and she named the pages. So she said, like, page 59, or maybe it was 60. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. And then she hung up. Really short, really intense. Um, now, you had mentioned earlier that in the diary – the My Haunt Life podcast is mentioned that she was overhearing it in one of the rooms. Well, if you looked up page 59 and 60, that's part of the mention of, uh, of our podcast. And it says, as for the Haunt you know, podcast, they, used, uh, they use it as a gauge of public perception. How much the public knows about the OOA seems that they understand nothing. So apparently we've been misinterpreting a whole misinterpreting oh, a whole bunch of this. I'll be the first to admit we know nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, and and probably misinterpreting a whole bunch of this. Absolutely. So, but um, it goes on to say A6 herself was, which is attendant six, uh, was put on the research team assisting the attendants who are hunting. She says strange word to use. I thought for people in Hollywood to take the fall when it came time to expose the creators. Uh, before A6 left me, she told me this. The creators are not the creators, Sister Attendant 1. So it seems the OOA wants others to put their Hollywood uh, cause to something in order that the actual creators may remain unknown, like pawns, fronts. That, that sounds a little jumbled, but basically what she's saying is this LA Times article was predicted in her diary, and she had been warned that at one point... There would be this public statement of, oh, these are the creators. So everything that we talked about a few minutes ago, about putting the Hollywood front on this from the BOS video, like the pros and cons of that, this, this LAR, the LA Times article was foretold long, long ago in her diary, man. It's, like, it's, it's just like, like, I just find that fascinating that, that like, all of this was planted. The seeds were planted months before this the LA Times article appeared. The fact that, that there was going to be a statement that these Hollywood types, as, as it says in the diary, uh, would sort of be a front for this, whatever this is. And I thought that was kind of a cool way. You know, like we had all joked um, when this article came out, like, oh, I bet they're going to try to make it in game. And it's like they did. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it works really but well. No, 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 no. They didn't try to make it in game. It was in game months before it ever appeared. No, they tried to make it in game. Oh no, they did. It's yeah, in the yeah, diary, yeah. dude. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I do not follow that at all. Oh come on. Saying saying that Hollywood people are be are behind it, and combine and saying that's foretold an article in the L.A. Times like that. No, no, sorry. Like uh, you. Doesn't really? Work. They've been saying like Hollywood people are behind it for a while. How do you not make that leap of faith? Because I have no faith. <sighs> I don't. Sometimes I just don't understand you. That's like, fine. This is so clear to me. Like 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 this is like yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. No, nothing. I have nothing to say. <laughs> I don't buy into it. Okay. You're in denial. 
Oh, geez. So uh, now the 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 next, uh, and again, I I just want to point out the fact that this is all happening literally just days before the live event starts. So uh, I, I just find it fascinating that there was all this activity leading us up into what is Ascension. But uh, a few days later, uh, Addison periscopes again, and it's another envelope drop and <laughs> she uh, she reiterates she reiterates again that there is going to be a live meeting and she names the day she says um uh september 7th right is going to be the day that there will be a meeting so but the thing that she does is she she almost angrily like states that like computers can be hacked emails can be found and she drops an envelope for someone and uh, and and I hope I get this right. Is it uh, Gabby? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and, and and who goes by Gabzilla, which is one of the cooler names that we have in the forum. <laughs> she was able to pick up that envelope, and when she opened it, the, she had angrily, Anderson had angrily stated that, like, look, I've seen the emails. You know, it's like I know what's going on, and we got two pages of basically excerpts of emails, and it was very clear that these portions of the emails indicated that there was indeed some sort of plot afoot to get to Addison, except now, now there's this reference to, can we bring her back into the fold? Like, is there a way to reprogram her as gatekeeper to slash Addison? And can we, like, what would happen if we do try to reprogram her? And at one point it says, would we end up with another vegetable? So obviously there, there's a technique which they've tried before which hasn't worked well on people. So, you know, does this involve the helmet? Does this involve something physical? Does this involve, is this a, just another brainwashing technique as everyone has theorized in the past had happened to Addison as she moved into the OOA Institute's buildings and, and were being controlled every waking moment by them. Like this, this, this just exploded my brain. <laughs> like when I, when I read what those emails said and the whole thing of like trying to reprogram her and again, this goes back to Mike, like I, you know, the whole split personality thing I mentioned earlier that I didn't buy into, like, this was another one of those moments like, oh, I might be really wrong about so much of this. Right. Which is okay. You choose your own path. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Whenever you're nice to me, I, I always think that there's some ulterior motive going on. <laughs> no. Russell. <laughs> The choices you make are a ripple effect. Oh. You may believe what you like to believe. There are no wrong answers. What you believe cannot be wrong. Okay. As they are your own thoughts. Okay. I just think I might have been wrong. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean that was that was utterly fascinating to me. And on the heels of that, that same night. Yeah. It's just... Uh, and be before you get into this, yeah. this drop happened at night. Yes, like, it did. So it, it wasn't a daytime thing. It was it was at night. It was dark out. It was probably like 8, 9 o'clock-ish. It was close to that because uh, you don't know this. Murder, She Wrote was on. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> really? An age joke? Come on. It's funny. <laughs> it was either that or it was tea time in bed. I don't know. Wow. Come okay. on. So, um, <laughs> where was I going? So, although I, you know, hey, come on. You, you cannot deny that Angela Lansbury. Come okay. On. You were talking about so, you knew it was eight or nine. So, I, <laughs> yeah, because uh, as it was unfolding, I was just getting off work. So I, and I didn't, like nothing had been posted on the forums about who was going to get it. Like when I, right when I was closing my computer down at work. So I hopped into my car and I actually started heading in that area and I just had my phone on and I heard it ding. So I pulled over and I realized, oh, somebody actually did get the drop and, and all of that. So, you know, I was actually, I was kind of taking the long way home. So I realized, oh, great. And, you know, like they're going to post as soon. This will be cool. I'm going to go home and I'll find out what was in this drop. So I didn't know what was in the drop when I got a phone call. And that phone call 
I got literally crossing the four. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't live in Los Angeles, there is an area of the 405 freeway, which is basically the top of a hill. Nobody gets good cell reception in that, in the, in the, in the pass right there. Like it just, it's, it's like, if you're on the phone in your car, your phone will, your, your phone call will drop in that area. Mike, I was right there. I was coming over the hill. Of course you were. <laughs> and my phone rang and it was no caller ID. And I'm trying, I, oh crap, really here? So, but I wanted to answer it. I didn't want to miss the phone call. So I, you know, put it on speakerphone and I do not know the, it was a woman. She was very friendly. She was very nice. Uh, I, I didn't get her name because like I said, I, I was in that area on the 405 with really bad cell phone reception. And, um, she she sort of was you know very cheery and she was like hello russell russell said yes and and it was breaking up but basically it was sort of like this is uh, work with the osdm i would like do you have the bear in your possession which really surprised me because nobody had mentioned the stuffed animal you know and in in quite a while um and i i believe you received it a few months back in a meeting at a certain hotel and like there was some breaking up and then I heard like to get that from you. And then I also heard have a truck to you within 15 minutes. And so I like, as I'm like the phone call was breaking up, I realized like they want the bear and they want it now. And this is the stuffed animal that Addison's dad, Tom left for me after the end of the dad in finger quotes. <sighs> All right, Mike does not buy that Tom is Addison's dad. He's wrong. Um, <laughs> so suddenly, and it didn't make sense. And especially that time, Mike, I didn't know what that drop had been. So I didn't know there was mention of reprogramming. I didn't, and, but I just thought it was weird that, first of all, why the OSDM? Which we should, uh, uh, I'm sorry, refresh my memory. What are the, the actual, uh, the name of the organization? The, the, it's the tech guys. Uh, Oracle Security Data and Management. Right. Why them? Like, why, why are they calling me out of the blue to get their hands on this stuffed animal? It, it made no sense to me. So I was having so many problems with the phone. Because call. you're the closest to her and you have an item of hers. True. But I didn't understand the timing. Because it's all coming. The yeah. one is coming. Yeah. So, I, and I literally, I kind of broke into the phone call and I said, look, look, seriously, I, I'm having problems hearing you. This is a really bad connection. And I said, if you can call me back in eight minutes, you know, cause, <laughs> <laughs> like, please, like, just, just, if you could call me back, because I knew that like literally from where I was in the 405, it would take me about eight to 10 minutes to get to the exit and I would have better cell phone reception. And when I went down that, it was like, I can get off the freeway. I would like, they just click, they hung up on me. And I was, and I just was, I drove the rest of the way home and I was puzzled. And I was just like, I can't, I couldn't figure out why this has happened. So, I, you know, I don't think the call was dropped. I think they deliberately hung up on me. Uh, you know, you know, and I, and I'd said like, call me back. They didn't call me back. Um, well, there was a reason they didn't call me back because they were apparently calling other people, right? Yeah. I got a very similar phone call from Linda at the OS, from the OSDM. And she basically said the same stuff to me uh, about your animal. Um, she told, she asked me if I knew that if you had a certain animal in your possession, and I said yes, the bear. And she asked me if I could get that, and they would have a car to me within the hour. And I said, I'm like, okay, well, first of all, I live in Whittier. Russell lives in Van Nuys, so a round trip would probably be at least an hour and a half. You know, and that's not including Russell talking time, trying to get the bear, <laughs> like, you know, convincing like convincing me because, yeah. And it's very funny because like, seriously, like, dude, you are probably the only person I would trust with that. Right. And that's, you probably shouldn't, um, <laughs> but, but you know, and I, I explained all that and there was a, a pause and it was like, uh, okay, we'll call you back. Click and never got a call back. Right. But it, it, it's just weird that those happen because those calls never really went anywhere. Maybe. No, no. Oh. Oh. Okay. 
keeping secrets. No, it's just, I, well, no, you know where I'm going with that. I don't. I'm following the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, you know, I got home, you know, and you let me know, like, hey, I just got a weird phone call. I was like, hey, I just got a weird phone call, too. So we compared notes really quickly. And then, then I read the emails, you know, that um, Gabzilla had gotten in the, the drop from Addison. And the, it made sense, like, oh, my gosh, they think this stuffed animal could be a trigger. Right. Like, somehow this could be of use to them. Like, it represents who she used to be. It represents, you know, the family she's no longer in communication with. It represents the younger, more vulnerable Addison. I, I, it, just, it just blew my mind when I, when I realized, like, you know, thank, you know, thank God I didn't fall for that. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so, and thanks for having my back. What do you mean? So, for, for, you, you wouldn't have given up the, uh, the animal. Oh, I totally would have. Oh, come on. If, if we talked about it, I wouldn't just be like, hey, can I borrow this? And then give it away. Like, But I mean, I'm all for... You're devious, but not evil. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but a few days after those phone calls, there was a Facebook Live video, which was a change because usually it's done via Periscope. So I thought that was kind of cool um, that they, they were changing it up this this far into it. And the Facebook Live video was of Addison, and she looked super happy, but nuts. I, I will, yeah, she did. I, that that it disturbed me a little bit because she did not seem like she didn't. Say, it, 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 her, it wasn't that she seemed confident. It seemed you know she was almost giddy. Right. And what were some of the words used to describe her? Like unhinged? Yes. Yeah. It hurt to read that. Did it? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but anyways, the unhinged nuts Addison uh, then told us that nothing matters. Uh, BOS doesn't matter. The OOA, Sentinel, Democrat, Republican, whatever side you're on, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter who has her diary because on Wednesday we get to meet the one. And at that point on the forums, people started theorizing. I actually even you know started a thread about um, who is the one because I had the theory because we had been told things about the one that you know that the one had had Addison's ear from the beginning was one of the things that had been said. Right, and, and that's why everyone thought it was you, or a lot of people thought it was you. We see that, the, and and I stated this. It didn't make sense because I wasn't there from the beginning. You know, and I actually theorized that it might be Mark. Right. Because he was there at the beginning of the OOA relationship with Addison because he was the one who brought her into that fold. You know, and I also, I put this theory, which I, I never bought into this theory, but I thought it was interesting. Like, what if it was Tom? Yeah. Because, you know, if, if you know, if, if you believe, like all sane people do, that Tom really is Addison's oh father. God. <laughs> Even Addison wrote in her journal, like... She wasn't sure if that was him. Like, Daddy, was that you? Was that? I, I know. So, and, and she told me. She called me, and she admitted that she wasn't yeah. sure. So, so now who's crazy? So, well. <laughs> yeah. So thinking about the one, you know, I, I, you know, proposed a couple of theories to you privately about, you know, who it might be or what it might be. And, um, you know, but the, the whole community was theorizing that. So the next day, Addison periscopes and confirms and says that, you know, like a location has been secured. There is going to be this meeting. Um, if you can make it, uh, you know, post your name on the forum. So they were trying to gather like who might be able to make it because they listed the start time as 6 p.m. Right. And that's tough for um, a lot of people. Work day. Yeah. Um, that was I at first I thought I wasn't going to be able to make it. Uh, and, you know, but you know, I checked work schedule like and, and i and other people were posting like this is going to be really hard a couple of people admitted there's no way i can do this so uh, you know it, it was looked like she was kind of gathering the roster to who might be able to to be at this live event to witness whatever the one is um then things started to go a little dark uh that was the night that um morgan who has also been very close to addison throughout this journey. Uh, Morgan uh, chose to side with the BOS at one point. Um, I think Addison had expressed disappointment in him 
at one point over that, uh, over that choice. But again, you know, as I've always said about Addison, she, she spoke to Morgan in a phone call. If I remember correctly, I, I believe Morgan said it was a phone call where she said, you know, I hope I can still lead you to the light, you know, lead you through the darkness that is coming. Uh, Morgan uh, was actually uh, working with Burning Man uh, during this period of time. And so phone connectivity, not a good thing for him. Uh, and he went on the forum and he posted that he had gotten a phone call from Addison and it went to voicemail um, and, and he didn't get it for several hours. But apparently Morgan's voicemail, he picked it up and, and, and Addison had left a message that said, Morgan. Morgan. It's me, Addison. I just wanted to hear your voice. Goodbye. And Morgan states that during that phone call, she was crying throughout the message that she left. And, uh, you know, he, he went on the forum and he said, this one hurt. I won't be there Wednesday, but I will never forget you, Addison Barrow. If there was something, anything more that I could have done, I would have. You define this experience in this journey for a lot of us. I hope by some miracle, this was not really goodbye. I think probably around the same time that Morgan got that phone call, she called me. This was, you know, after the Periscope video had happened and I'd seen that and, and she, you know, I picked up the phone and, you know, she asked if it was me. She's Russell and she was stressed. She was flustered. It took her a moment to focus and she said, Russell, my head hurts like it used to. And she said something along the lines of, I think I see them following me, which she had made reference to me before that she was feeling a little paranoid and she thought that they were following either her or maybe her family members really early on, months ago, when she first having started having doubts about the OOA. You know, what followed, there's this rush of quick half sentences. And, and to be totally honest, I was so floored by the change in her tone that, that I, I don't, you know, I, 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 I just kept catching half sentences through her emotion. And she, she said, I wanted to meet. And I thought she was referring to the community. And then she also said, I, I wanted to meet with you. And then she said, I will try not to fail. And I asked, I said, is there anything I can do to help you? And she said, I, I wanted to, I wanted to. And then she got really, really flustered. And I thought, I couldn't tell if I was hearing, you know, excitement you know, I couldn't hear if I was hearing apprehension. I, it, was, it, was, it was this weird tone of voice with her. So I wasn't exactly sure what her emotional state was. I wanted to believe that it was excitement. And I told her, like, look, I'm going to do my, do my best to be there on Wednesday. Is there anything I can do to help you before then? And there was this pause, and she sort of changed her voice again. And, and like, in absolute sincerity, Mike, and like, like this was... Like she, this was complete Addison. This was her being 100% sincere. She said, thank you for not giving up on me. That was cool. And she hung up and I, and I was just like, <laughs> I can only imagine <laughs> what you were it, like. Uh, it, it was one of those things like, wait, was that like, am I supposed to be joyful or was that doom that I just heard in that click? You know, it's, I literally was completely flabbergasted. I didn't know what to think. And then I went on the forum and I read what Morgan had posted, you know, that I described earlier, that Morgan had gotten the phone call or the voice message. And I read what he described. And I was like, oh, like, that was not excitement that I heard. Like, that was apprehension. So, yeah, that was disturbing. The next day, you know, she, she went again uh, on Periscope uh, that was the day that she said that the, you know, the chosen will be given an address the day of the event. And she actually named the zip code, which is 90015, which is sort of a downtown Los Angeles area. She was in sort of a warehouse. It was very nondescript setting and she kept, but she acted a little bit paranoid again, didn't she? Oh yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's like, we, we weren't exactly sure, you know, how she was feeling, but she, she didn't seem, she didn't seem as confident and she didn't seem like she felt safe. So, on the day of the event, which was September 7th, mm -hmm. the following day, Mike, why don't, why don't you talk about the first periscope? Oh, geez. Sentinel periscopes. He 
finally shows his face after months and months and months of hiding in the shadows. And he finally makes an appearance on what we're presuming is the last day of indoctrination. So it was nice to see him out of the shadows. Uh, and this was a, it was very, very funny because the, the, the periscope cut out and he had to restart it. And he, uh, <laughs> He he joked at the beginning of the second broadcast, like, of all people, to have their internet go out. Yeah. <laughs> Which, of course, he was the guy who was hacking and all that, right. like, you know, of all people, for the internet to be a problem. So, um, but, you know, he named a couple people, you know, like, from the BOS side. He said, some people believe that this is all over. And I, and I, I interpreted that, Mike, as meaning that Ascension was about to begin. Right. And he kind of teased that, you know, like that, that we were being a little bit naive, I think was sort of the vibe that I got. But he also said, Hey, I may even show my face tonight at this event. Yeah. So then everybody started thinking like, he's going to crash it and there's going to be like crazy melee going on. And right. He did show his face though. Yeah. But, but not how I expected. No, definitely not. Same, same with me. So just so to set up the event, we were, we were, uh, several people were, you know, sent emails that like you the title of the subject line of the email was chosen and gave us an address and told us that we needed to be there uh five minutes before start time uh that you know basically at 6 p.m downtown los angeles at that point you, when you showed up he was hanging outside the place yeah very casually and he would go up in all of the known bos people he would sort of pull aside he'd say a few words with privately um, I didn't know if that was, you know, was he playing welcome wagon? You know, had That's... those people met him in person before? I don't know if anyone had ever met him in person before. Right. How did you interpret that? I, I mean, that's, I think that's exactly what it was. It was basically a, Hey, BOS, thank you. Here's an actual face. Your time was a little bit earlier than mine. So you, you, I, I was you saw six. more of him than I Yeah. Did. Like I saw, like, as soon as we got there, cause I, cause they staggered the start times, the, Six o'clock, six o five, six ten, um, just to make sure people going in it, there wasn't like a mass herd of people all at once. And I got there a little bit before six, and he was just hanging out outside. And you know, I show up, and I was with Susie, and I just saw him, and I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, look at this fool, like showing up at this event, just hanging out casually. What? You, come on, man. Like you're supposed to be Sentinel and you're just hanging out outside with your man purse. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Like where's be evil or like do an evil laugh, stare me down, like do something. But you know, it, it, it is what it is. And, and, you know, Kim, uh, electric hippo, she came and they were talking and, and it was funny because I was, I was blowing up Kim's phone, like just trying to make her laugh because she was having this serious oh, conversation kidding. with him. And like, I was just like, Kim, hey, Kim, like blah, blah, blah. And then I started periscoping her, like, <laughs> like talking to him and, and stuff like that. It was really funny. Um, and I know like later on, like she was laughing about it, but I was like, so trying to break her in that moment with him. But... <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize that that was going on. I saw, I tuned into the Periscope that you made. So yeah, I, I got it. So like Mike said, we had all staggered star times and, you know, you, you were, and, and we'll get to that description in a moment. You know, there, there's one thing I haven't said, which, you know, I should say is that um, two hours before this event, I got a phone call and it was Addison again, sounding sounding down, I guess would be the way to put it. Um, and, uh, you know, she just, you know, I answered the phone and she said, Russell. And I said, yes. And she paused. She said, do you have something of mine? I said, yes. And she said, can you bring it tonight? I said, yeah. But I immediately went to, you know, I didn't say this to her, but I immediately went to the whole OSDM thing of, you know, them calling you Mike and them calling me trying to get their hands on this stuffed animal. Right. Um, you know, so I said, you know, I said, yes, I, I can bring it, but for your safety, do, do I need to keep this thing hidden? Because I, I didn't, I, it just, it felt weird that she was calling me directly because, you know, once months ago over Twitter, she asked me like, like you have this thing, like, like that, you know, do you have this thing of mine? When I asked her, like, do I need to keep it hidden? She actually sounded confused. She didn't know how to answer. 
and she had um she just she just reassured that I should bring it and I told her look um like I have a backpack so yeah I'll I'll bring it and she just said just just bring it I said okay I will so that, this is the first time hearing about it yeah I, I I haven't told anybody this thanks jerk we're supposed to be friends no <laughs> <laughs> I, I, at this point. You heard it first on the podcast. <laughs> the same with me. No, I, I, you will also, you know, you know, I know how you are with spoilers. I so wanted to, you know, I, I, I will say this. Somebody specifically asked me, like somebody sent me a message. There's only one person in that room who knew that I had it. Oh no, I didn't want to know, know like, oh yeah, like, you know that I just meant like, even afterwards, like you never said like, oh yeah, Addison told me to bring it. Like that, that yeah, kind of because stuff. I, I, yeah, like there was one person in that room who, who specifically privately messaged me and said, so like, is anything up with this? You know, is there anything up with the stuffed animal? And uh, I indicated to them, I, I, I said, you know, since you asked me the question, you know, I was given an instruction earlier and that's all I said to them. So, but I didn't, I didn't, I, I so wanted to talk to you about it, but I knew that you didn't, we wouldn't want a spoiler. So right. and I, you know, so that's, but, uh, you know, I was the only one in the room that had a backpack on. Yeah. Like I, I knew you had it because you were like, cause you had asked me like, Sh do you think I should bring the bear? Yeah. And I'm like, your path is your own dude. <laughs> like I tell you this every time you ask me a question. <laughs> so like once I saw the backpack, I was like, oh, he brought it. Yeah. I had no idea what was going to happen. So we arrived at the event, right, Mike? Yeah, we did. You're hanging out with Sentinel. No, <laughs> not hanging out with him. So, he's, he's in the area <laughs> and talking to his BOS crew. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, as Mike said, there were apparently three star times, uh, small groups of people showed up um, and we were told to go upstairs uh, at this building in downtown Los Angeles yeah, and knock exactly at the time. And, you know, for those of us that do blackout, yes. <laughs> we know how important that is. And <laughs> it was funny because I had my phone like next to the door and my, my knocking hand like an inch away. And as soon as that second hand hit, yeah. bam, like I started knocking. Right. And then um, a girl met me. I believe it was one of the girls that was in that, that picture they posted with the, um, there were two girls. And Under the was, neon sign. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it was one of them. Uh, I'm brought, I walk in and I turn and I, this, the scene is just so incredible to me. You know, there's, there's a desk and there's an old woman. She was from Scarole. She was one of the people that yeah. was speaking. And then standing with her is this just man with like this giant gray beard, a tall man. And it's just like for that moment, like I was so, I was not in downtown LA in some loft. I was I was somewhere else. Like I was like in this story, like it was, it was so cool. It was such a cool visual. Um, so they walked me to the, to the desk where they are and, and the, the woman asked me to sign the book. And so I signed the book and the, the girl asked me to put the hood on. So I put the hood on. She had a black hood that she yes. gave to you. Nice velvet hood. Yeah. Very nice. And, um, and I was, so I was the first one in, I was the first one to sign the book. And this is going to come into play as a funny part after we talk about this. <laughs> um, so I was the first one in. They lead me a into some other room, and I have the hood on, and all you hear is this creepy, dark and ominous yeah. music and tones and sounds, and it's pretty unnerving. So we're waiting there, and I started thinking, like, wait a minute. I'm the first one in. I really doubt that they're going to do anything special for each group. It's probably going to be like the whole group thing. That means I'm standing here with a hood over my head for at least 10 to 15 minutes while every other group comes in. And that's exactly what happened. And it's by the way, it was about 20. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, and it's funny because there were some people on the forums that were like, Oh my God, like people had to, people that went in first had to wait. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, but it, it's funny. You know, we, we joke about, things that we're used to in haunts like you know being blindfolded and being ran through someplace and we just run because right. we we just we trust the person but same thing with this like i had this hood over my head for 20 minutes apparently 
just standing there and it's just like all right and the room was pretty hot yeah it was very warm all right so i i i have to share with you my my hood adjustment moment oh no so uh i i you you know uh well like i'm I'm sure you have the same thing like you want it to be dark and you want it to be creepy if if it it starts to go there so you know like they're they lead the first group in we go up you know, and they lead us in single file. I'm also asked to sign the book. Um, the woman, you know, like I turn and she says, please put this hood on. I put the hood on. She leads me in and places me someplace. And this event started at six o'clock. So it was still daylight outside. And in the entranceway, there's a huge window. And then we're sort of led behind a, uh, uh, like a partition into a room, but it's still very bright. Um, they've lit it with some purple lighting. You know, we found this out later. I, you know, I, I obviously have a hood on, so I, I don't know that at this moment. But because of the daylight flooding in from the the, the open the window out in front, what I do is I take the hood and I pull it down in front of me, so it like it tightens over my face. I did the same thing <laughs> because what I was trying to do is I was trying to shut the light out. I was just trying to make it darker because if it was going to be, because obviously they didn't want us to see. So I wanted to make it darker. Well, after about 10 minutes, it was like, oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> now for, for the people like listening, it, it wasn't just a hood. It was a cone shaped hood where the skinny part is at the top. So when you're pulling it down, that means it's getting tighter around your face because you're going into that more narrow yeah. part of it. So, but yeah, I was just trying to shut the light out, but it was like, oh, yeah. Ten minutes later, it was like, wow, this is really getting warm. But yeah, haunt me kicked in. It was like, let's make this darker. <laughs> so uh, we, we, so eventually, obviously, what was happening is all the groups were being let in. Everyone was asked to put on a hood, and we were being placed somewhere in the room. So after a while, uh, after all the groups came in, we hear a familiar voice. And who is that voice, Russell? It was Addison. Or Gatekeeper 2. And she starts talking to us, and she first says that we shouldn't applaud. We may feel like we want to, but to not do it. And so at that point, I was like, well, where is this going? You mm -hmm. know? And then she proceeded to, to thank people the act, active people in the community for things they've done, which was really, really a, a, just a cool gesture on their part. She thanked Russell and I for documenting the experience and named us both the true scribes. So I'm a scribe again. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> I didn't see that as an actual promotion, but yes. Okay. I... <laughs> Why do you got to take that away from me? <laughs> no, I tease. No, I like, you know how I feel about, you know, a, as far as I'm concerned, you are and always will be the scribe. Stop. Thanks, but stop. Anyways, um, get out of here with your feelings. <laughs> uh, so then after that, she thanked Sean and Melissa for being the, the sentries. Um, Susie for her passion, mm -hmm. her Bu creativity. Buzz and Kim for the roles they've played. Andrew. Andrew for the articles he's written. Like It was just a really, really cool thing. Because, you know, like, there doesn't need to be acknowledgement, but the fact that they went out of their way to do this, that was really cool. And all the while, this was being periscoped. So all the people who were not chosen, all the people who have participated from other countries, from other states, did have the chance to witness this ceremony. Yeah. And mind you, while this is all happening, we still have our hoods on. Right. Addison begins to speak... Not about just the acknowledgments, but about the community, about the journey that this path has taken us on. And I think what we should do, Mike, is, is you know, I, I, I think maybe we should actually, for those of who want to hear it, um, the Periscope audio is not fantastic. Um, it's a little bit low. Addison, it, it wasn't speaking over the music that was playing because there was music playing during this. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we should, we should let people hear that. I think. Yeah. Let's put it, we'll put it at the end of the podcast. Um, but we'll describe it here. Uh, yeah. And also, and if, if, uh, maybe if I can drop some of it in Mike, uh, in editing this later, maybe I will. Okay. To me, uh, Mike, one of the, the really cool moments in this is, you know, she was talking about 
the people we've met, I guess. <laughs> how do you, how would you even get into that? Yeah, that like, I, that's, that's what I don't know. But you know, while we still have the hoods on and she's talking about the different things we hear from other familiar voices. The one who often struggled with what was real and what was the text. <laughs> we heard <laughs> Gatekeeper 4. And then later on, she did one of her, not catchphrases, but something that... Why are you here? It's like, oh, that's Gatekeeper 4. And like, as soon as I heard that first laugh, man, my, like, I have this like vision of my hood creating a smile from, yeah. the, from like the huge <laughs> smile that I had I underneath it. Yeah. But I was like, oh my God. And I was like, so excited. And I was like, oh my God, will we get to meet like the gatekeepers? Like... You know, and, and then it went back, like I had, I had started like a funny uh, theory thread or, or revived one on the forums that day because everyone was convinced Addison was going to die. So I was like, you know what, like, like this is our, this might be our last day at camp. Let's have fun. And one of the, the, the funny theories I said is like, oh, Addison's going to go or, or some, the one is going to go and there's going to be like the end of Return of the Jedi and there's going to be the, the gatekeeper spirits and ghosts yep. and they're going to be there. <laughs> and so it's like that, like it the happened. gate, the gatekeepers talking, it's like, oh my God, it's kind of happening. Like, that's so cool. <laughs> and so we heard gatekeeper four um, and we're assuming gatekeeper three and gatekeeper five. Like that was just, that was also like really, really cool, you know? Cause like, it, it was like the people there, most of the people there have been doing this for so long. You know, a lot of the people there were there since the beginning, like since February and March and, you know, all of these people that we've met along the way and all of these characters that we've become invested in, you know, we got to, it was like a final goodbye. Right. And that like, that was so cool. And then... Addison begins talking about the book that we had signed. We were asked to remove the hoods. Finally, I think everyone breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and the reason I said that earlier about it being about 20 minutes is I actually looked at my watch, <laughs> like to try to figure out, I was like, that was, I think between 15 and 20 minutes for me, which means it was a good solid 20 for you. Uh, here's something funny. What if Addison saw you looking at your watch and called you out for that? Like, what the hell, Russell? Like, is this not moving quick enough for you? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I was curious, you know. Um, yeah, just, just like, it, it was my haunt self. Like, well, I wonder how long that was. <laughs> um, but she, she began, again, very graciously acknowledging everyone who was in the room and talking about the book of Anak and the fact that our signatures were now part of the book. And she goes to the end of this particular book. And that was the moment I think everyone in the room was waiting for. Yeah. And while she's explaining everything and talking about the book, she's on the verge of tears. Like she's very emotional. Like you can hear in her voice and she gets to that last page and like Russell said, I think we all were like, okay, this is it. And before your signatures, before the last page of our book, we state the most valuable lesson that all of you have taught us. Together we are one. Your words have become our love. Um, she let us know that all of us are the one and that we have always been the one. That makes sense. Yeah. If you want to go back and rehash all the theories, if you want to go back and, and look at where all of the story has led, you know, the, the fear of what the one is, the fact that, you know, maybe the OOA was nervous about the one coming before they were ready, the acknowledgement of the power that the one has or may have and may be unaware of. Yeah. It, it makes it sense. It totally that makes sense. The community is that power and the community 
could throw this whole thing into disarray. The community could change the direction of this. Mm -hmm. So it, it does make perfect sense. And it, w it was a very dramatic moment. Yeah. So she finished that up and basically said, you know, thank you for everything and we are going to celebrate. And then a bunch of waiters came out with hors d'oeuvres. Which surprised everybody. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> oh, we're going to have a party now? Cool. Well, she, Addison does thank us at the end of that video and say, it's like, it would be nice to just like kind of have a social. Yeah. And so we nervously start to kind of eat. Not me. Well, <laughs> so I, I think it was Buzz turned to me and, and, our, uh, and, and said, like, are you actually going to eat this? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, just in case, I'm not going to eat anything that you're serving. But thank you. Um, but yeah, it was cool. So people started eating and Addison went around and, and started mingling and saying hello to people. And I might have been the only person that sh I didn't like talk to or I, who did, she didn't talk to. Like, I didn't get to able to talk to her or say hello or anything like that. Really? Yeah. So you, 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 I, wait, you weren't avoiding her or anything. It was no. Just, oh, okay. No, it was just, you know, I didn't go out of my way, but. Well, we thought, you know, I think she, we all thought we were going to be there longer. Than yeah. Me. Like she was, a, she, because she was walking around like close to me and, and saying hello to people near me. So I was just like, oh, I don't want to bug her. Like if she comes over, like that'll be, that'll be cool. And, you know, say hello. And. I won't, you know, I, it, it, part of me makes me wonder if like she avoided me because she thought I might say something about four, which I wasn't gonna, no. I mean, you know, like at, not at that point. You wouldn't do that. No. And so it is what it is. I would have liked to meet her, but I have a feeling we'll see her again. I, I think so too. Um, Mike, when she sort of said it would be nice to like, you know, like have this like get together and I thought it'd be nice. Thank you. And she, um, and we started to break apart. We were in a circle. Yes. And you were almost opposite directly of me. And you were standing in front of a pillar and a speaker. Mm -hmm. Which I am so sorry that you had to stand directly yeah. in front of that speaker. The whole time. <laughs> the entire time because, damn, that was loud. What? Um, hmm? What? <sighs> ah. <laughs> when it broke up, there was this moment when I kind of like, I was looking around the room to see who all was there because, you know, like there was a group before me and a group, I was in the middle group. So I didn't even know who all was in the room. There was a person standing behind you, Mike. They were hiding behind that post. Really? Yeah. He stepped out. He was uh, nicely dressed. I believe it was a, like a dark blue shirt, um, a dress shirt, you know, just, um, and he sort of circled the group. And immediately, Melissa and I registered him. And we looked at each other and kind of mouthed to each other, who is that? Oh. Because it was very clear that, to me, that he, he was trying not to be seen at the beginning of this. And he circled the entire group. He kind of was walking among us. And at one point, he walked very close to me. And I said, hello. And he said, hello, how are you? I said, I'm fine. How are you? And he, he kind of gave me this very smile and nod, very not curt, but obviously not wanting to engage, very suspicious. And he mingled with us. And, like, and I don't know how many people were completely aware of him. Like, d did you notice him? No. I mean, I know... You know who I'm talking about because he, he, you know, he, he comes into play in a few minutes, yeah. but like, yeah, he was present and, and he was sort of like lingering off to the sidelines, but that's the first time I noticed because I looked up and I saw you across the circle from me and he peeked around the pillar. That's creepy. <laughs> and I was like, and that, that's why I immediately went, okay, who is that? You know, he's, he's not part of us. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and I, I think Buzz also registered him because, uh, you know, Buzz was also on sort of my side of the circle. And so we started mingling and, you know, I said hello to a few people. Um, and if you watch the Periscope very closely, you see some interactions going on in that room. Uh, one of them that was caught by the Periscope involved Michael. Um, Rizzo. Mike Rizzo. Apparently, 
uh, well, it's funny. Did you see him talk to Sentinel outside? Yeah. Okay, what was that? What was that like? Did you witness anything interesting? You... No, it was just they were just talking, and I mean, at one point he Sentinel like had him by the arm, and it was like you know I don't know what they were saying, but it was you know kind of like when you're like really telling someone something, it's like look, like do like this, blah 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 blah. Like it, it had that kind of look to it. Right. Well, yeah, Mike posted later that he had been given the instruction by Sentinel that he was to give the journal back to Addison. And he had the job basically to convince her to break free from all of this was sort of the, the vibe that I got. So if you watch that Periscope, you see Mike lean down, <laughs> which is very funny because Mike is so tall yeah. and Addison <laughs> is so short. <laughs> It's actually kind of a humorous image on Periscope as he's leaning down and, and obviously talking to Addison. Uh, I was on the other side of the room and, you know, I, I don't engage with Addison either during the mingling, Mike. And there was a, a point because, look, she had called me and she had asked me if I had the animal, the stuffed animal. And, uh, you know, at one point I made eye contact with her and all I did was I put my hand on my shoulder and grabbed the backpack and she basically looked at me very confused and turned away from me oh, at wow. that moment so I was like okay something's up so I go over and I am you know talking to a couple of people uh, a couple of people I haven't seen in a while you know Dela I hadn't seen in a while um at one point, the the guy that I mentioned and described to you, um, you know, he had a he had a beard, the blue shirt. Uh, he walks by me and he kind of stares at me and he whispers, "Give her the bag now." What? Now? And he said, "Yeah, okay." I I'm going to describe this from a couple of different angles. If you go back and watch the periscope of this event. There is a moment when Addison, near the end, steps aside and sort of leaves the group. That is the moment when I was instructed to move forward. And I was there, and I watched that whole thing happen. Like, like because I knew it was like what was like. Well, I had a feeling I knew it was about to happen, and like I was like, oh my god, Russell, he has the backpack. He's talking to Addison alone. Holy crap! And so like. I wanted to like mentally capture this moment because I knew it was going to be something special. Yeah. It is. It was funny because I so wanted to, like he gave me that instruction. It was clear that he like, it was act now. Like that was my instruction. And I so wanted to like give a moment, uh, uh, like I wanted to go and, you know, I hadn't talked to you. I hadn't talked to Sean who was up from San Diego. I, I was like, I was like, like, wait a minute. Like I wasn't expecting this to happen at that moment. And so, but he made it clear, like the, just the tone of his voice, like you need to move now. And so I walked over and I, and I, and it was very clear that Addison had taken a moment and stepped aside. And so I, I approached her and I took the backpack off and uh, you can't hear us on the periscope, but I basically said, I said, look, you, you asked about this and I wanted to give this for a while, you know, to you for a while. And, you know, I have a silly question and I pulled it out of my backpack and I don't know why I said this, but I looked at her and I said, can you tell me its name? Oh, wow. <laughs> Getting deep. And she took it and, uh, she looked at it and stared at it and she kind of pulled away and she said could, could you just give me a moment and at that point i saw her change and i stepped away and i i knew that something bad was about to happen uh at some point i felt someone put their hand on my shoulder and i think they also realized something bad was about to happen and i i, I don't and unfortunately i don't know who who that was i think they were either trying to comfort me or something i don't know like but i felt that hand i have uh, and i'm sorry i don't know who that was but thank you to whoever it was and i sort of moved off to the side and that was when addison sort of 
woke up? How would you describe that? Yeah. I mean, if, 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 I mean, and it does seem like we went to the theory where she was brainwashed yeah. at this point. Um, but yeah, like I think that bear or the cat snapped her out of it. Yeah. And just by the way, Mike just said that I now would be any as good a time as any to clarify. We have referred to this thing as a teddy bear from the beginning. Everyone, I, I called it a teddy bear, but the day that we were at the hotel, you know, um, you know, I Instagrammed a photo of it. It's not a teddy bear. It's a stuffed cat. But everyone just, I just like, I started to refer to it as the bear. People on the forum started to refer to it as the bear. It just stuck as the bear. But if you look at the photos that I posted, literally from the day that I got it, it's a cat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sorry if that, that causes any confusion to anyone catching up on the tension experience. So, did she ever give you an answer about the name? No, she never. She didn't answer me. Okay, that maybe you already knew. Maybe the name was Bear. Oh, wow, wow, yeah, that might be really deep. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Truth bomb delivered by Mike. <laughs> so I, I, for from my perspective, that will always be known as Bear. Yeah, yeah, even though it's a cat. So she sort of stepped away. She basically declared this as being false. What the fuck? This isn't real. You people are delusional. This isn't real. All of this isn't real. You know that, right? This isn't real. Shit. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right. So she has stated that this is all fake. She has stated that we are, you know, deluding ourselves, that this is none of this is real. So at that moment, the wait staff, the waiters, the guys with the hors d'oeuvres mm -hmm. drop their trays and rush forward. <laughs> And what you hear is that entire community screaming. Yeah. And moving forward because they picked Addison up and they carried her toward the back of the room, which actually Mike and I know the space that we were in. We've been to haunts in this space. Um, we've been to events in this space. It's, it's a space downtown that we're familiar with. And we know that there's a back entrance. And so they were carrying Addison away to that back entrance and we followed. And, and in that audio, you hear someone screaming, no, that's me. That's not you. That's beast mode, Russell. Like the look on your face and the sound that came out of your mouth, like you are not Russell. You're not the first person to actually point that out to me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next morning, someone texted me, uh, Jeff, a friend of ours, texted me, and, and he, he said, I watched the Periscope, and I have never heard that voice come out of you, Russell. Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it was disturbing, because I, I, I felt like I had caused pain to someone. Um, yeah, it, it, that, that was it. That was it. I felt like I... Yeah, and you know me well enough to know, Mike, that, that that's something which would get to me. And meanwhile, I'm eating my imaginary popcorn, watching it all go down. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so uh, what, and by the way, kudos to Tension Experience, whoever was running that Periscope, uh, if you've rewatched it, Mike, they cut that Periscope oh, at the perfect. ultimate cliffhanger moment because you see all of the entire room running into the light because there's a window at the end of that hallway it would, toward the back entrance. And like you see Addison being carried away and you see all of us just chasing the guy down. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it was like a perfect like season finale. Oh, yeah. You it, know, it was... it's just like, wait, what's, what, what's happened? What just happened? What is going right. on? Where is she? Uh, so a couple questions have come up. If, you're, if you watch the Periscope, there was, there's a loud noise. And basically what the waiters did was they dropped their trays. And somebody tweeted at me, like, were those gunshots I heard? Like, no, they were not gunshots. It was just the food trays being dropped. And so we rounded the corner. And the gentleman with the beard that I referred to, who told me to give her the bag, give her the stuffed cat, he was standing there basically spread eagle in the door, blocking our path. 
And I, uh, I don't think I said anything to him, but I was face to face with him. Just, I was so angry. Uh, and he basically said the event is over and told us to leave. And we were not happy about that. So I, I want to switch to you now, Mike, because I, I, I was sort of, I was unaware of the people. I don't know if everyone was back there. I, like, I am literally, like, I was focused on that guy's face. Right. I was so angry. Yeah, I mean, that's... I wanted to kill him. That, wow. He didn't do anything, though. Uh, he told me to give Addison the animal, so... But it's not anything he did. <sighs> Yes, I know that, but I like he was my target. He was a convenient target of my rage in that moment. I wanted fair, to kill him in that moment. Fair enough. But yeah, like when that happened, I mean, we were all crowded there at that doorway as well. And then finally, you know, it was like the when a nightclub closes, like all right, everybody leave. You got to go, you know, and yeah. You know, people started like, you know, can we like joking around with him? But like, you know, obviously not in a funny way. It was like, well, can we eat the hors d'oeuvres on the, on the floor and, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And that was pretty funny. And so finally uh, we leave and we're like, wait a minute, there's a back entrance. So we all try to go to the back entrance to see if we can see anyone and see if like she's being taken away. But they were long gone by that point. Uh, there, there's one moment that you're unaware of. Oh, man. What is with you? <laughs> I'm... Oh. <laughs> Um, as everyone was, uh, actually there were a couple of people taking photographs of themselves in the hoods and stuff yeah. upstairs at the very end. Jake. <laughs> so Christine, um, but, uh, that guy was kind of clearing the room, you know, I, I'm just, I, I guess I should refer to him as like bearded guy as that guy, that guy, that guy, that, that bearded guy. Um, he's like, look, like you guys need to leave, like, et cetera. And I, I was still rather angry and I looked at him and I said, can I ask one question? And he said, okay. And I said, privately. And I pulled him over to the side and I said, I just want to know, did I just do her harm? Because at that point, I don't know what triggered. I don't know if it was, a good thing, a bad thing, this might be a good thing for the community, depending right. on what you believe about, you know, whose theories you want to buy into, whether the BOS, uh, you know, BOS might be involved somehow, whether the OOA is taking her back and reprogramming her, whatever. In that moment, I didn't know, but I felt horrible for what had happened. And so I said, did I do her harm? And Mike, the the look on that guy's face made my stomach turn. Did he smile? He smiled and it was, it was like, it, the subtext was sort of, isn't that cute? Oh, wow. The guy who gave her the cat wants to know if he harmed her. It was that look. And like, uh, and I just, my stomach turned. I was sick. Because it's just like, I, oh, crap, what have I done? And he smiled, and he, and he looked at me, and he went, well, that's a question that'll just have to be answered later. Damn. I just turned and walked away. But that, that like, I, yeah, that moment was just sickening to me. Well played, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Because I didn't think it could get any worse. I really didn't. And then I had to ask that question. And he just, it, it like, you know, it's, it's the stabbing and then twisting. That's what that was. I wish Tension had credits. Like, that guy played by. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was... Um... Yeah, that was that that was probably one of the most memorable moments even though it was 3 seconds long. You know, that was that was a just devastating. Just, ugh, it was just sickening to me. Wow. Like and and I and, you know, I say that but it's like what an amazing moment. Right. Like 
you know, I totally acknowledge that in that moment, like, like they made it worse for me. Right. They made it darker. They made it more painful for me. Uh, and, you know, and, <laughs> and, and I'm sitting here going like, that was awesome that they did that, even though it really sucked at the time. <laughs> but screw you. <laughs> yeah, he's like, in all due respect, screw you, but thanks. <laughs> so That's kind of how we feel about Extreme Haunts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very much so. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's how that actually ended for me. And, and, I, and I, I haven't shared that with anyone. And, and I wanted to surprise you with that moment. Thanks. Because I knew that you would really appreciate that moment. I do. Of, of how emotional... You know, like, I, I knew you would get it. Like, I knew you would understand. And I also knew at that point that you were downstairs, like, looking for the back entrance. And look, and so I rapidly kind of went down and joined you guys. And there was also a very humorous moment involved there, partially thanks to you. Oh, geez. Like, because, like, the, we went to the back entrance. Obviously, everyone was long gone. And um, you had this moment of, like, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> There's no one from the BOS with us. Where did they go? Like, wait, I bet they're doing something. Wait, Sentinel was here. Wait, I bet he gave them instruction. Like, you went through this whole thing. It was, just, it was amazing to watch you go through that. So what I do. It was hysterical. And so the funny part was like, okay, we need to get back around to the front of the building. Like, we do not have eyes on anyone that is BOS. We need eyes on them. We need to find out where they are. You went into military mode. <laughs> you went into full recon mode. <laughs> and so we round the corner of the building, and what happened? They were just there talking. Yeah, and they turned and went, oh, that's where you guys went. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, BOS, you may have won this round. Yeah, it was, it was very funny because we, we rounded the corner, and they were like, oh, uh, oh, there you guys are. So you may have thought this was wrapped up in... Well, not a nice bow, at least not for Russell. Um, kind but... of a crumpled bow that had been stomped on like my heart. Yeah. But, oh, but before we talk about that, I just want to like say thank you to Tension because this was something that they did. They did this a few days before their huge event, which is Ascension, that we've mentioned a couple times. This did not have to happen, but... They, I took this event as a thank you to the active people, act the active people in the community as like, you know, just like, you know, here's where it all ends. Like this is, there's, there's closure, you know, to a point. And, you know, with, with Addison being taken away, like we didn't really know, but, you know, like, thank you attention for wrapping it up like that. Thank you for thanking us. You know, like it was really, it was a really cool gesture on their part. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It was, you know, everyone I had mentioned earlier on the forums was just assuming there would be a Periscope because of the logistics of they're opening a live event this week. Like, why would they take the time and effort to do another live event for us? And, and the fact that they did and something so dramatic and, and so well thought out with all of the mythologies coming together to some degree, it was, it was, um, you know, it, it, it was moving. It was touching, the fact that they did this. You know, and, and, you know, everyone there, I think, truly appreciated it. Yeah, and so while we were all healing and wondering what happened to Addison, thinking it was all over, and we're just waiting for Ascension, we hear the Periscope sound. Yep. The tension experience is now live. And in that Periscope, we see someone with an envelope run across the street and drop something off and the periscope was titled thank you for everything but some of the letters were capitalized and the capitalized letters spelled out her so michael gray was able to get this drop which god damn dude you're on a cat you have a broken foot you have a cast on yet you can still drive and get to this drop and you you periscoped it, but I couldn't see. But I just imagine you hopping on that busy street, hopping up onto the curb <laughs> to get that, which is just an incredible sight in my mind. But you got it, you periscoped it, and what it was was a picture of 
Addison under that neon sign that we previously mentioned uh, where the two girls were sitting. And she was just sitting there kind of looking blank. And it looked like all the lights were out. And the only light was from the glowing neon sign. So there was like a red wash over the picture. And on the back of it, there was a note. And it said, thank you all so much for helping deliver Addison back to her real home. We know she hasn't been feeling like herself lately, but we're positive she'll have a clearer head in just a few days. Now, when that was found, just a few days is ascension. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling that we are going to see Addison in ascension. Post helmet, perhaps? Yeah, because she looks helmeted in that photo, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, the helmet supposedly does affect her very, very deeply. And, you know, she had made reference in that phone call to me not long ago that her head hurts like it used to. So I think all those theories about reprogramming, I think all those theories about them trying to get her back to a more submissive mental state. And, they, you know, they would always say, uh, and talking about Ascension, they would say that, you don't need to know the past in order to enjoy it. So for new people, they right. don't need to know the last seven months. But, and I think this is one of the perfect ways to do that because if Addison is in Ascension, to those people, it's just a girl that, you know, is part of the story. But for people like us that go through, if we see her, it's going to be like, holy crap, it's Addison. Right. You know, and it's going to have that much more of an emotional impact on us all. Yeah, I, I just, uh, yeah, the emotional side of Addison's story is certainly heavy for the last couple of weeks. And it's going to be interesting to see what role she plays in Ascension. I'm really, really wanting to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it, it's crazy to think that in nine hours I will be there. Cool. I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I am so like, happy that it, this is here. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's, you know, when this started, you know, we had no idea what it was going to be, no. you know, and then when we found out about Ascension, it's like, oh, cool. But it's like, it's kind of surreal that part of this is over and uh, this part is starting, right. you know, because like, we've all been through so much. Yeah. Oh, many ups, many downs, you know, lots of intrigue, lots of mystery. Uh, I am so looking forward because Ascension sounds like it is such an ambitious project i am so looking forward to going through it yeah i mean what do we do at this point like what do we say <laughs> like it like we've yeah. talked about everything we've wrapped up you know the last seven months it, you know kind of like with what that event was that's what this podcast is for us right you know it's like it's kind of <laughs> bumming me out you know i it, it it doesn't bum me out actually <laughs> it doesn't because i i, I this has been fascinating it's been you know i have seen you know things i've never participated in before the arg aspects of this the live events the one-on-one -on -one scenes you know that you know that many people did get you know it's i've never seen anything quite like this it's ambitious it's it's oddball and i mean that as a complete compliment oh yeah it's it's so interesting to me and, you know, even though, you know, we've been told that all of those, you know, the LA Times article and the various other podcasts and, and, and articles about, you know, the event that is Ascension, uh, we, we've been told that they're a front and we don't buy into that. But, you know, what they've revealed, there's so much that this is trying to do that I truly hope it succeeds because I think Los Angeles is hungry and ready for something this experimental because you have it in other major cities and, and 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 it's not the first time something like this has been tried in los angeles as far as a big immersive event but nobody has ever tried anything to incorporate so many different elements like this is I, you know i think you know we're partaking in the birth of something very unique and that excites me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and I, and I, you know, it's like, you know, you and I have talked privately about what this might be, what it could be. And, you know, that's part of the exciting conversations you and I have had is, is theorizing. And what if they do this? And what if they do that? And you know what, Mike, when you bought your ticket, 
they asked you a very specific question. What was that question? I don't remember. That was oh, like come that on. was a while ago. Was it about your biggest fear? Yes. Okay. So when you buy a ticket, they ask you about your fear, you know, and I, I answered honestly, you know, and so like, so I know that they have that information. So I know that they, there's this little seed in the back of my head that even if they don't use that information, they could, they could exactly, you know, and, and, you know, I, I, I hope they do use that on you tonight. Because you're my friend and I want you to be excited and scared and thrilled. And, you know, I wish that for you, man. I'm excited that you're going through tonight. Thanks. Me too. So, you know, but there is that part of you going, you know, or, or at least for me, there's part of you like that has to say, I bought this ticket to an event, which I don't totally know what it is. And they've asked me for this information. Right. Like, that's so cool. And I'm so looking forward to going through it next week. I mean, I, at this point, you know, I really don't have much to say about the experience anymore, but I want to say thank you, you know, thank you to tension. Thank you to everyone behind it. You know, thank you to the people that participated that we don't know, you know, like the girl who played Jenna. Thank you. The, the girl who played or yeah, the girl who played Bob Jones, the, the guy <laughs> who played Bob Jones, you know, like people like that, like, the person who grabbed me in the dark. Yeah, like <laughs> Arson, the the driver, you know, Tom and Margaret. Like there's so many people like that made the this experience. The security guy who threw Tom through a wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the wall itself yeah. for being there and Scarf breaking. dude. Yeah, like oh. the... The person the, who made the donuts. The ringing of the bell guy. And, you know, obviously like Addison. And, the attendants who were so creepy at that yeah. mixer. And gatekeeper four at the like gatekeeper you know, three, you know, the, in real life, like if they're, if you're listening to this, like, which, you know, if you are, thank you. Um, yeah, but and, in real life, like, thank you for, for doing what you've done and playing the parts you've played because like you've had such an impact on so many people that you will never know. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. So thank that you. is it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's easy when you say it like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is like, I, I feel like I, I need to like lay a, you know, like a, a, like a heartfelt music cue under all of this, but you know, seriously. And, and also thank you to the community that is formed. Yeah. And that's, that's what I was going to mention too. You know, thank you for tension for making people become new friends and making casual acquaintances, better friends, you know, like, uh, like we've made so many new friends out of this and it, it's, it, you know, thank you, you know, and thank you for everyone for dealing with me on the forums <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> um, Kim and BOS, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but you know, we all know, and we laugh about it afterwards. Like nothing was ever personal. It was all about, you know, having fun and playing our part. So, um, yeah. So again, thank you so much to everybody involved. Um, I can't wait to see what you have in store for us at Ascension. And I believe that probably wraps this up, Mike. Yeah. It's seven months in the making of this podcast. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you again. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to check out the tension experience, if you haven't heard about the website that 8 million other times we've mentioned it, uh, you can go to the tension experience.com on Facebook, the tension experience on Instagram, the underscore tension underscore experience, and on Twitter, the underscore tension underscore EXP. And with that being said, thank you again. I'm Mike. And I'm Russell. And thank you for listening and for everything you've done. But uh, that, um, uh, that, that thought of, you know, where was I going with that? I have no idea. What <laughs> I I have no idea what I was about to say. <sighs> Wait, before we completely go, what we're going to do here is uh I'm going to put down the audio from that final periscope and so you can hear what we have described even though there are snippets of it in the actual podcast. I'm going to let it play uh, for the entire duration. Again, it was periscope. Uh, I've pulled the periscope offline. 
uh, I've tried to help the audio a little bit. Hopefully you can hear it clearly. Um, again, just as a service, uh, I'd like to like put this on the end of the podcast just for you guys to have. Thank you all for joining me. I want to assure you that the one is here with us. But first, there are others who must be recognized. Now you may feel the need to clap or voice recognition. Do not stand and listen silently. Michael Fontaine and Russell Eaton your passion and your devotion, your willingness to help spread the truth of Anna. This brings you both the true scribes of our history, and I cannot begin to thank you enough. Sean Rich and Melissa Craig, your task is famous, always trying, and extremely difficult. You tempered our followers most with a guidance that left everyone confident they were safe and secure. Your actions allowed us free to truly be ourselves without fear, judgment, or ridicule. In what areas of life outside of our community can we say the same? We all honor and thank you for your warm hearts and true leadership. Susie, your creativity and generous gifts have kept our joy and interest bound with one another in this journey. Tara Stevenson, you opened your home to all of us and gave us a place to commune with our new, like-minded friends that began to feel more and more like family. Andrew Cash and Neil King, you let your voice bring out to the mass that you still stuck in the dark. And your words brought countless numbers to our life. Bud and Kimberly, you played the role that we're asked of to perfection with a conviction and strength that surprised us all. Now ask for the one. This has not been an easy journey. The one has often struggled with what was real and what was a test. <laughs> the one is what those who try to stop us all along have always feared. This is because the one holds all of the power. I think you already know, don't you? The answer has always been right in front of you. Your words become gospel. Why are you here? There is no conspiracy. You are the lie. The one that held control from the very beginning. The one is the reason all of us are here. The one who brought others out of the darkness and into the light. The one held fast. Chaos and destruction. At every turn, the one was tested, tried, and challenged. And every time, the one persevered stronger than ever before. Ultimately, no matter what happened, the one did not falter. For the one is the light, and the one is the truth. Please now, everyone, remove your hoods to discover the last, the final, and the only keeper of our way. It's the last page.
page of our most sacred and valuable text. This is the new book of Anne.